Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. So by now, I'm assuming that most of you have seen the movie, which means you're probably very aware of the blood transfusion scene that takes place between Blue the Velociraptor and the original Tyrannosaurus from Jurassic Park. Now, what I really want to talk about in this particular scene is the logistics and science behind what's going on, and ask the question, could they really do this in real life? Before we begin, I want to say that I'm getting my information from two sources. The first of which is a year-old article that was actually written back when Fallen Kingdom came out. And the second happens to be directly from a paleontologist that I brought the question to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So in the movie, Blue is losing blood on the Arcadia. She's been shot with a live round by one of Ken Wheatley's men, and it doesn't look like she's going to make it. So Zia Rodriguez has the idea to perform a blood transfusion on the animal in order to keep her alive. But there's a catch. In order to do this, they're going to need a specific type of blood. Blood that should be at the very least closely related to the Velociraptor. And the animal of choice happens to be none other than the Big Bad T-Rex. Fun fact, J.A. Bayona revealed that this was a scene that happened to not be in the original script. And it was actually something that he came up with on his own before pitching it to Steven Spielberg, who reportedly loved the idea. So yeah, have fun with that. Back when Fallen Kingdom came out, this scene was given quite a lot of attention from people who, generally speaking, thought the idea was ridiculous. And I mean, you can't really blame them. If we tried to do the same thing with a human, I'm sure there would be all kinds of red flags going off inside of your brain. That being said, there's a really interesting article that addresses this very topic. So, could you really give a Velociraptor a blood transfusion from a T-Rex? Well, the article contains the following. Yes, but you could only be able to do it once. According to the veterinarians we spoke to, it would be possible to transfuse blood between two different species of dinosaur, provided, of course, that dinosaurs exist. But it would be too risky to repeat it, and not just for the doctor. The second time you would expect more complications, like the red blood cells breaking apart or severe allergic reaction, explained Lauren Witter, a general practice veterinarian based in Queens. So the reason they say this works is because it's something that they've tried before called xenotransfusions. It's known as a perilous medical practice on animals that basically involves blood being shared between two separate species. Now, the article went on to explain some of this in further detail, and most of it happened to be research that the doctors did in the logistics of bird and reptile xenotransfusions. They said that the immune systems to those animals is likely the closest that they can get to dinosaurs, especially when compared to something like mammals. So, their reaction, as they either accept or reject foreign blood cells, should be pretty comparable. Once the foreign matter is introduced into the body, it produces antibodies to reject that. When you use the same species, you might not get that reaction, explained Dr. Katherine Kaisenberry, an exotic animal specialist. But when you do dog to cat, or pigeon to parrot, their bodies recognize those blood cells as foreign. And the next time you transfuse the animal, it will go into shock. The second time a xenotransfusion is attempted, there is a roughly 60% chance the animal will die, according to Dr. Kaisenberry. In the 35 years that she worked at the Animal Medical Center, she did about 50 cross-species transfusions in birds. And the reason for that is because birds often receive cross-species transfusions because they don't have any blood types in the thousands of different species that exist. Still, they only do this to stabilize a creature that's in shock. So it's tested, it works, and it's something that happens in the real world, but it ain't an everyday event. And that's just what the veterinarians had to say about animals in the modern day. What about someone who actively studies paleontology? Someone who knows far more about these animals than most? Well, I reached out to Kirsten Formoso, who I'd had a brief conversation on this subject before in the past, to help tell us what exactly this blood transfusion would look like. And she had the following to say. I didn't actually hate that scene because it introduced general audiences to the concept of cladistics, evolutionary relationships based on similarity, not differences like taxonomy. It actually wasn't egregious. But 
a far closer relative to raptors that was definitely on that ship was actually the Gallimimus. So yeah, that would have been both a far better solution for not only the raptor, but also Owen and Claire's safety. Now, Kirsten actually provided a pretty cool chart that depicted the dinosaur's relationship on a graph, and yes, it looks like the family that includes the galleys would have definitely been the better choice. As for why they chose the T-Rex, well, I mean, as far as a scene goes, it's definitely the more thrilling decision to make for a filmmaker, if not the most plausible one. The only logical argument I can think of as to why the characters would do this is because of the amount of blood that they'd need, which I guess makes some sense. I mean, you'd probably have one super lightheaded Gallimimus after draining all of that blood, and their whole mission was to save the dinosaurs, but still, if we're going by science, this species would have been a far safer choice to make. Kirsten goes on to say that, in reality, it probably couldn't be done, but she also used the same references to dog and cat transfusions in the real world, even though raptors and rexes are even less related than those two mammals. She then said they also could have captured a couple of seagulls on deck and drained their blood, but that would have been highly suspect. As far as the Jurassic Park film series goes, I think a lot of people believe it to be far more realistic than what it actually is. I know there's a lot of thought and commentary given on the science behind cloning animals and filling the gaps in their DNA with the blood of frogs, but at the end of the day, when you ask the yes or no question of whether or not any of this is possible in reality, it's pretty much a solid no. But it's that allure and what if nature of the science of Jurassic Park that I personally think makes the story so enjoyable, more than just a run-of-the-mill creature feature series like Lake Placid or Anaconda. Jurassic Park bases its movies in science fiction, uh, most of the time anyways. Now I want to thank Kirsten for answering these questions and educating me on dinosaur cladistics and xenotransfusions. If you're interested in checking out her work, I've got a link in the description that leads to her Twitter account that's got all kinds of dinosaur stuff in it. So yeah, I'd recommend learning more. This scene always reminds me of the Brachiosaurus sneezing all over Lex in the first Jurassic Park movie. So finding out that there is actually a little bit of science behind an otherwise pretty basic set piece was pretty cool. But hey, those are all just my thoughts on this scene. What do you guys personally think about the blood transfusion that took place in Fallen Kingdom? Are you a fan of it? Do you hate it with every fiber in your soul? Or are you just indifferent to all of this? Whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all even continue to watch these videos. And I want to thank each and every one of you for all of your continued support. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching this video and hope you all enjoy today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you on the next one, guys. And as always, take it easy.